All right, got some interesting news for you from the Catholic Church. Get myself a glass of water, or drink of water, sorry. It's really, really hot in my room right now because this is where I do all the recording and there's no air conditioning, so it's just boiling hot in here. Which is nothing that some water just can't take care of, but uh, basically here I have this article on Protestia, which is, used to be called Pulpit and Pen, uh, but how the Roman Catholic Church is telling U.S. bishops to not withhold communion from pro-abortion Catholic politicians, because what happened is that when Biden, because Biden is, you know, supposed, you know, claims to be like a devout Catholic, and you know he does, you know, do some Catholic, you know, he did, he does attend Catholic churches and that kind of stuff. But uh, what happened was that there was a, a Catholic bishop, uh, which you know, Roman Catholicism is a satanic cult, but you know, even a broken clock is right twice a day, and there was a Catholic bishop who actually refused to give Joe Biden communion because of Joe Biden's uh, stance supporting abortion. Um, so, you know, Roman Catholicism is a pagan cult. It is satanic. It is. It was formed from the councils of Satan in the the uh, fourth century, and Roman Catholicism is condemned in Revelation 17 and Revelation 18. But you know, even a broken clock is right twice a day, and false religions can still get some stuff right. For example, Hinduism uh, Hinduism condemns abortion too. I actually read um, because I Google. I just Googled did, does Hinduism condemn abortion, and I read some articles on Hindu websites showing from their own Hindu scriptures that Hinduism does condemn abortion and Hinduism does, you know, say that abortion is a sin. So, you know, again, Hinduism is another example of a satanic uh, false religion, you know, a, a pagan false religion that is basically anti-Christ, and they got something right. They, are, they, they condemn abortion too. Islam condemns abortion. Uh, I think abor abortion is condemned in, I think, the Hadiths or whatever. Uh, there are other religions too. I think, uh, Orthodox Judaism condemns abortion, so false religions can get some stuff right, okay? A broken clock can be right twice a day. So, but you have this interesting article right here on Protestia, which, again, they originally were called Pope and Pen. The Vatican is telling U.S. bishops to, to not withhold, sorry, my cat is right there, I just tend to him, but not withhold communion from pro-abortion Catholic politicians. Now, you see, a biblical church that is following the word of God would say that first of all, if you're claim, if you're professing to be a Christian and you're supporting abortion, that's a big problem. Okay, that's the thing. But of course, if if they're professing to be Catholic and they're pro-abortion, well, then we have to just accept them as Catholics. You know, which is what the Vatican is saying. Um, I'm speaking like from their point of view, basically. But uh, I'm going to show you this article because the Roman Catholic Church does condemn abortion. They do condemn birth control on, I think, their catechism and some of their various councils. They condemn birth control and abortion, which, again, you know, just like how Hinduism condemns abortion, just like how Islam condemns abortion, just like how uh, Talmudic Orthodox Judaism condemns abortion, there are some things that false religions false religions can get right. A broken clock is right twice a day. Um, but I'm going to show you this article because... Once again, the Vatican, the papacy, is contradicting their own stances. So much for being the one true, unbroken line of, of you know, the, the church that was started by Jesus Christ with the Apostle Peter, who they say is their first pope, which is ridiculous, because Peter contradicted a lot of the heresies and false doctrines and pagan practices of the Roman Catholic Church. But here you have another example of the Roman Catholic Church contradicting teachings of their former church, and even teachings that they, that they supposedly hold to right now in their Vatican II, because even Vatican II still maintains opposition to abortion, but yet they're contradicting that, their own current stances. So it just shows that they're just a cult that is not founded upon God's word. This is what happens when you're not founded upon God's word, okay? This is what, this is what happens when the word of God is not your final authority, when some pope or some priest is your final authority, because then they can just change their stances and you have to go along with it. But anyway, and this is also why assemblies of believers should be local and autonomous, okay? Because then you don't have some Pope-like dictator who has authoritarian control over the local assemblies. So anyway, uh, this is, it says, the Vatican sent a letter to the U.S. Conference of Catholic, Catholic Bishops regarding some of their parties' push to deny communion to pro-abortion Catholic politicians. Sorry, just, I need water again. I've really got to get air conditioning in this room. It's so hot in here. Problem is that my camera and all my recording equipment is like wired to the computer, so it'd be hard to just move around constantly. But 
continuing. So it says um, they're, they're, uh, they sent a letter to the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops because the, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops is saying that, that they're going to start denying communion to Catholic politicians who support abortion. Uh, and the message cannot, couldn't be clearer, don't you dare do it. So, so the Vatican's saying, don't you dare, you know, deny communion to Catholic politicians who are for the sin of, of abortion, basically. A uh, letter was sent by the perfect, by the perfect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, Cardinal uh, Louis F. Lar Lardia. I hope I'm saying Lar Ladaria. I hope I'm saying these names right. To the president of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, comes in response. And, and by the way, too, the thing of, of a bishop and then someone's over the bishop. That's not scriptural. Okay, the scriptural roles, the scriptural position, positions of leadership in the church. You have a bishop, and you have a deacon. Okay, and then basically they run the local autonomous assembly of believers. They they, they kind of they they teach the people. I mean. That's how it goes, and then of course you'll have you know the the positions of, of evangelists and and you know teachers and and that kind of stuff. Okay, so you do have different roles in the church, but the only position of authority is the bishop and the deacon. You don't have some pope who's above the, the bishop and that kind of stuff. It's it's ridiculous. Okay, the bishop and the quote unquote pastor are not two separate roles. Okay, they're the same thing, and then you have the deacon who then would be like a helper to the bishop. So yeah, the Catholic Church is an unscriptural role of church leadership okay so anyway so let sent by the uh doctrine or the congregation of the doctrine of faith um in response to so this is, uh, comes in response to a plan that they were drafting that they would uh, withhold the eucharist from democrat catholic politicians who were supporting legislation uh entrenching abortion euthanasia and lgbtq policies sodomizes okay i don't use the term lgbtq uh, uh, and, and protest uh, you know, I would, you know, encourage them to start using the word sodomite because that's the scriptural term. LGBTQ is not uh, the right term. LGBTQ is a politically correct um, liberal term to refer to these sodomite uh, perverts, basically. I guarantee you I'm just going to get kicked off YouTube because people like the liberals on YouTube don't like free speech. They don't like it when you go against their progressive, political correct, social liberal agenda, but who cares? In the letter, Lardia referenced an earlier uh, missive where they were advised, where they advised the bishop uh, planning this a few years ago, quote, that dialogue among bishops should be undertaken to preserve the unity of the Episcopal Conference in the face of disagreements over this controversial topic, unquote. And that if they go ahead with it, such as, quote, such as a policy given its possibility, uh, given its possibly contentious nature, would have the opposite effect and become a source of discord rather than unity within the uh, es, es, episcopate, episcopal, whatever, is unscriptural Catholic terms for the, the church, and larger church in the United States. So what are they saying, basically, that, oh, if you're going against pro-abortion Catholic politicians, you're being divisive, you're being, you're sowing discord, you're just being contentious, you know? Again, this is why you need the local assemblies, not some pope who just runs the whole thing, who just runs every single assembly, because then uh, when there is someone who's in your church who's supporting abortion, out they go, you know, you, you admonish them, you show up in the scriptures that abortion is murder, and if they don't repent, then it's a problem there. But, of course, the Catholic Church is, is an unscriptural cult, so they don't follow that. And again, if there is a politician claimed to be a Christian, and they're for killing babies at the abortion clinic, then chances are they're not saved, because the Holy Spirit would not lead them to support something like that. Uh, in short, they don't want this to be done because they're worried it will cause division, and and therefore they are willingly content themselves with unity, or they they willingly content themselves with unity over lies rather than dis dis disunity over over truth. So basically, they're saying, oh, you know, who cares about the truth? We have to just unify and not cause division and contentious. And by the way, casting you know condemning a professing Christian who supports abortion is not being contentious, it's not being, it's not sowing discord, it's not, you know, spreading, you know, uh, uh, di division, it's just doing what the Word of God says. You know, we're supposed to rebuke sin, we're supposed to judge righteous judgment, John 7, 24. We're supposed to open our mouth and judge righteously, Proverbs 31, verse 9. And uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 15 says that he that is spiritual judgeth all things. So yeah, we're supposed to judge sin. And profess, professing Christians who are in sin. You can read about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, where Paul is saying to kick out the fornicator, the drunkard, the idolater, etc. 
because there are many because they believe holding Catholics responsible for openly repudiating, repudiating major foundational Catholic doctrines will cause a despondence and break unity. So what they're saying is that basically, if a if a Catholic is contradicting the words of the Church, don't don't rebuke them because you're gonna you're gonna be divisive, you know. But in the local church, in the biblical church assembly, I don't like that term local church because it's not a scriptural term, but in the biblical church assembly, if someone's contradicting the scriptures, then you tell, you tell them, hey, you're wrong. You admonish them. And of course, Titus 3.10, heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Okay. And no, again, again, no, it's not being contentious. It's not being, you know, divisive. It's not being, uh, not sowing discord. It's just doing what the scriptures say. Uh, where was I at? So saying it will cause, it will break unity. They advise the bishops to talk among themselves, to hash it out, and see if they can come up with a plan to talk with the pro with the pro abortion Nancy Pelosi's of the world and see if they can if they understand, if they really understand the Catholic teaching on this matter. Uh, if these two contradictions are met, only then will the Vatican quote face difficult face a difficult task of discerning the best way to move forward for the church in the United States to witness to the grave moral responsibility of the Catholic public officials to protect human life in all at all stages. Yeah, coming from the people who murdered millions of Bible believing Christians who refused to accept the heresies and paganistic practices of Rome and protecting human life at all stages. And not to mention too, um, a lot of the Republican Catholic Supreme Court uh, justices back when abortion was legalized in, I think it was 1973, you know, were Catholics and they were Republicans too. That's going to step on some people's toes, but, you know, the truth hurts sometimes. Uh, and it says, like, a, like an emasculating kick to the groin, however, the Vatican notes that even if, if a consensus of bishops is achieved and they come up with a national plan to determine if willingly disobedient Catholics may be de denied communion, they say that the, the plan could only be a recommendation and that a prerequisite that any provision of the conference in this area would respect the rights of individual ordinaries in their diocese to uh, and uh, prerequisites prerequisite of the Holy See. Translation, if, if some diocese chooses to give communion to them anyway, and not follow the plan on the account of having their own house rules and standards for communion that they can adhere to or not, then they must have the freedom to do that. And have at the bottom, wow, what a bunch of cowards. Exactly. So let's contradict their own teachings to not be divisive, and we're just going to, you know, do it with that, what's that quote from Alex Crowley? Do it that will should be the whole of the law. You know, just more proof that the Roman Catholic Church is a satanic cult. Do what thou wilt should be the whole of the law. That's all, that's the philosophy of Satanism. Just do whatever you please. No moral standards. It's, I mean, what the Catholic Church is saying here, what some of the Catholic dioceses are saying, is just no, nothing more than the, than the uh, philosophy and doctrine of atheism. That's all it is. But anyway, I'm going to show you from the Word of God, because you know a lot of you know pro-abortion advocates will say that, well, the Bible doesn't condemn abortion, so therefore we can have an abortion because and, and they'll say that well you, you religious fundamentalists are saying that abortion is sin yet your yet your bible doesn't condemn it i'm going to show you that the word of god does condemn the the concept of of killing a baby in the womb and showing you that the life of life of the unborn child is to be protected sorry i'm kind of tired right now but um exodus 21 22 if men and this is a good really good verse of scripture to use to show that the life of the unborn is to be protected in the womb and that causing the life of the unborn to die or to basically cease to exist there is a punishment for that so this is exodus chapter 21 verses 22 down to verse 25 it says if men strive and hurt a woman with child so that her fruit depart from her and yet, yet no mischief follow he shall be surely punished according as the woman's husband will lay upon him and he shall pay as the judges determine uh so so what's happening in verse 22 is that if two men are fighting basically and then they accidentally maybe like like ram ram against a pregnant woman or they maybe, maybe like maybe kick her by accident or something like that just an accident happens and she loses her baby gets a miscarriage as a result there's a punishment for that. She has the, the men have to basically pay a fine, essentially. They have to pay according as the woman's husband will lay upon them. Okay? And he'll pay as the judge as the judge is basically determined. But then in verse 23, look what we have here. And if, and if any mischief follow, then this is that but says, and if any mischief follow, then thou shalt get life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. 
okay? What's going on in verse 23 to 25? So in verse 22, it was just simply an accidental, you know, causing the woman to lose her baby but by accident. But then in verse 23 to 25, it's they purposefully were fighting and they purposefully caused the woman to lose her baby by like ramming it, ramming into her or kicking her or something like that. So this time it was on purpose. And look what the penalty was there. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. And it says, uh, verse 23, then thou shalt give life for life. So there's a death penalty for that. If they purposefully were trying to fight in order to like cause a woman to lose her baby by, again, like ramming into her or kicking her or whatever. So uh, abortion, I've said this before, abortion should be given the death penalty. And it was given the death penalty in prior generations. And, you know, and people who did abortions, they called them witches. They called them, you know, uh, sorcerers and warlocks because that's, that's what they are. That's all what witchcraft is. So, yeah, that's, that's your passage. That is Exodus chapter 21, verses 22 to 25, showing you that the life of the unborn is to be protected. And even, even if they were fighting and it accidentally caused her to lose her baby, like maybe she just got in the way and they, they maybe rammed into her by accident, there's still a punishment for that if she loses her baby. But then if, if it's on purpose, they purposely will like ram into her or kick her and cause her to lose her baby, then they get put to death, life for life. So that's why I said that abortion providers... Uh, should be given the death should be given the death penalty, and people don't like that when I say that. But you know, it's called a so, little so, something called manhood, where you just don't care what people think. So, I just want to show you guys that abortion is a bloody, uh, barbaric murder of an unborn child in the womb. That's all it is. It's witchcraft. It is done by a bunch of sick, demented, Luciferian devils who get a paycheck for what they do. So, but of course, that paycheck will not save them. Uh, when they stand before God at the great white throne judgment, if they don't get saved according to the gospel of the grace of God in Acts 20:24 20, and 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. So, anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Don't be deceived by the Roman Catholic cult. It is just a pagan uh, antichrist cult, and it is satanic, it is demonic, it is idolatrous. So, don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.